Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we continued our free Forex trading course with a look at one of the more popular strategies that traders use to trade the currency market, the carry trade strategy. In today's lesson we're going to continue our discussion on the carry trade with a look at some of the factors outside of current interest rate differentials which must be taken into account when trading the strategy. So let's get started. As we've learned in our first two lessons on the carry trade, it is the size of the difference between interest rates in the countries whose currencies we are trading that ultimately determines how much we either pay or receive for holding a position past 5 p.m. New York time. With this in mind, it is only logical if the difference in interest rates between two countries changes, then so will the rollover amount that is either paid or collected when trading those countries' currencies. As a quick example, let's take another look at the New Zealand dollar US dollar currency pair. As of this lesson, if we were to buy the pair, then we would earn $10 for each contract held past 5 p.m. New York time. As we've learned about in our first two lessons, the reason why we would earn $10 is because we are long the New Zealand dollar, where currently interest rates are at 8.25%, and short the US dollar, where interest rates are currently 2% as of this lesson. So with this in mind, we are long the positive interest rate differential, which equals 6.25%, which is the 8.25% New Zealand rate minus the 2% United States rate. Now let's say in our example that interest rates in the United States went up by 1% to 3%, while interest rates in New Zealand stayed the same. If this were to happen, then our positive interest rate differential of 6.25% would drop to 5.25%. Very simply here, as the positive interest rate differential has decreased, the amount of money we would earn for holding the position has decreased as well. Conversely, if rates were to rise in New Zealand and stay the same in the United States, then the interest rate differential would grow in our favor and the amount we would earn for holding a position past 5 p.m. would grow as well. So you can see here that one of the first things that must be considered when thinking about a carry trade is what the current interest rates are and what they are expected to be for the life of the trade. A second thing which must be considered when thinking about a carry trade is the exchange rate fluctuations that may occur while a trader is in the position. Traders may consider a number of things here, the most popular of which are one of or a combination of the following. Number one is capital flows. Most importantly here are interest rate expectations, which as we discussed in our lessons on how interest rates move the forex market, when interest, rate, it, when interest rates rise in a country, interest-bearing assets generally become more attractive to investors, which will many times drive the value of a currency up, all else being equal, and vice versa when interest rates fall. Notice here that I say interest rate expectations. As we have talked about extensively in Module 8 of our Free Basics of Trading course, markets anticipate fundamentals, so in general, once an interest rate increase or cut is announced, it has already been priced into the market. Number two is trade flows, and most importantly here, as we've discussed in our lessons on trade flows and capital flows, is the effects that trade flows have on the current account for a particular country. We will be discussing how traders go about forecasting changes in capital and trade flows in the coming lessons. The third thing which traders focus on, and which we have already covered in our Basics of Trading course, is technical analysis. As carry trades are generally longer term trades, many traders will look at the overall trend in the market and use technical analysis to try and determine when they think the trend is going to be in their favor if they open a carry trade. The importance of developing a plan to trade the exchange rate fluctuation portion of the carry trade in addition to the simple holding of a position overnight to earn interest cannot be overstated. To help drive this point home, 
Let's have another look at the chart for the New Zealand dollar US dollar currency pair. As you can see here, in a little over three months, the New Zealand dollar US dollar has the, 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 pay, the currency pair has fallen over 500 pips. As we learned in module two of this course, the value of a one pip move in the New Zealand dollar US dollar currency pair is ten dollars, meaning that in US dollar terms, this is a five thousand dollar loss had a trader entered a long position at the top of the market to try and take advantage of the positive carry. If you remember from our last lesson, at the current rate of $10 per lot held past 5 p.m. New York time, a trader would earn $3,640 for holding a position for one year, which in this case would unfortunately not be enough to offset the $5,000 loss that was taken in three months. As a homework assignment for, not for tonight, I would like everyone to think about the following question. What are some possible reasons that the currency pair has sold off so much, and could they have been predicted? If you'd like to post your thoughts in the comments section of this lesson on informedtrades.com, we'd love to see them, and I personally reply to all comments there. That's our lesson for today. And that wraps up our lessons on the basics of the carry trade. In tomorrow's lesson, we're going to start a new series on the fundamentals of the Forex market, where we will delve into how traders go about forecasting interest rates for things like the carry trade. So we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And good luck with your trading.